Good morning. Happy Monday. Welcome into the CHGO Bears podcast presented by PointsBet. Use that code CHGO to get up to $2,000 in free bets and live your bet life. What's up, Bears fans? Welcome in. Rookie mini camp in the books. We got some recap and reaction for you on today's show. My name is Adam Hogue alongside Nicholas Moriano. What's up, Nick? What's going on, Adam? Special shout out to all the moms out there. Hope everybody yep. enjoyed Mother's Day, had some time with the family, and, uh, you know, the weather started to turn a little bit over the weekend, and today's beautiful, so let's hope it sticks. Let's hope it sticks. I think it's supposed to be like 88 tomorrow or something. You mm-hmm. think it's supposed to rain, but... I'll, I love you know. starting a podcast on a Monday with weather talk. Right? This is great. We well, need it, though. I just wanted to warn you, I'm going to take the rest of the week <laughs> off now and mm-hmm. golf. Oh, okay. So right. I know that's news to you. I'm just telling you right now. Okay. It looks like I'm going to have to come up with some uh, content here. Uh, but I've never golfed really before. I've done mini golf, but I've never actually, like, wow, hit a golf ball. Like, oh, my God. We do have a lack of golfers in this I mean, situation here. You know, I'm not a golfer, but I could golf. Casey golf. I Casey believe so Casey, she'll go golfing with me. I just saw uh, an Insta of her new sh- her new cleats or Ooh, spikes. I did see that. Yeah, mm-hmm. the cleats. Where see, Kevin Kaduk said that he doesn't golf anymore, basically because of the whole having kids thing, which is a situation I can relate to. We're we're we've been in talks about maybe doing a dad pod because I'm in. I, I, I think we just got to do it. it. It doesn't even have to be a real podcast. I think it should just be a social media segment. Okay. But I think people really dig it. You know, it seems like every morning we get in here, we start talking about mulch. <laughs> yeah. Things like that. I, so I think it needs to happen. Yeah, I was so. at Lowe's getting some mulch a couple weekends ago. Yeah. See? Right there. It could be wow. like 20 minutes. People want to watch that. I know it. Um, no, I they will. don't. They came here to watch Bears talk, and that's why we're here. So <laughs> we will <laughs> uh, jump into the happenings over at Hallis Hall. Rookie mini camp. Nick was there for the whole weekend. I was there on Friday, and we heard from coordinators. We heard from players and draft picks and undrafted free agents, and the Bears have even made some transactions this morning, switched up their roster a little bit after having a bunch of tryout players. So we will cover all of that here on the CHGO Bears podcast. Hopefully you're following us on Twitter, hitting that subscribe button, hit that like button. Um, if you're enjoying the show, we appreciate you doing that. And please rate and review the podcast as well. But uh, let's just start kind of generally. Nick, your big takeaway from rookie minicamp? You know, there's there's a lot here, Adam. I think for, for me, like I really wanted to just see what these draft picks look like, specifically Kyler Gordon. And we kind of got a limited view because he did end up getting cramps after or midway during that first practice. But for me, just kind of seeing – how he was moving. And this look, the spotlight's on him, Adam. First Ryan Poles' first draft pick, the the first one of this draft class. How's he gonna look in some of these drills? And I just thought that for someone who does have all these athletic traits, it felt like he was on University of Washington's campus just doing these drills. Didn't look like it was too much for him and look the part. And again, it's a very limited view of Kyler Gordon. Maybe I'm making too much of how this guy's moving and you know, drills you'll see in a high school. Very yeah. routine high school practice, but I really liked um, that about him. But just the intensity in all three practices, Adam, it seems like what we saw in voluntary minicamp is translating here, what this coaching staff wants to just implement for the culture here. It's like this hits philosophy. It's real. Like we saw that within the rookies. We saw at the voluntary minicamp, there's a ball on the ground. These players are just going to the football, going to look to score. So – it's seen that this culture is really starting to take place and starting to be implemented in these two two camps that we've seen so far. Yeah, I noticed that on Friday, like the first time a ball was on the ground, you you kind of had uh, whoever picked it up. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was like kind of a hesitation of like, well, are we supposed to run this out or just? And then all of a sudden, it was like, no, no, go, 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 and everybody was sort of late to the party, but they did realize quickly, okay, yeah, no, scoop and score every single time. And I think again, that was on a. Um, I think it was an incomplete pass, yeah, wasn't it? Might not? Have been yeah, so incomplete pass like the other rookie or the other mini camp that we that we got to see where that stuff started to happen. So yeah, you're definitely, and that's kind of what these. Another benefit we talk a lot about the players, but another benefit of these early spring practices that we get to watch, whether it's the rookies or the vets, you get a sense of the coaching staff and how mm-hmm. they do things. I mean, in fact, that's a that's a big part of it. And there's still a lot of new faces out there that I'm still trying to be. I'm like, wait, who is that? 
you know, you're still trying to learn who these people are because yeah. there's been so much turnover at Hallis Hall since uh, late or uh, early January. Yeah, and that was actually something that I mentioned in just like the top takeaways from all three practices. Um, in that Friday, that Saturday practice, like a guy like David Overstreet, who David Overstreet the second, who's the assistant defensive backs coach for the Bears, like you constantly heard his voice and you know over the music that was playing. We were up in the you know the second level of the Walter Payton Center, but hey, it's like. You, you hear things like, um, you know, finish all the way to the drill. Finish it like peanut when they were kind of working on the, the fumbling drills. But it's like you're seeing this coaching staff and kind of like their personalities. Like Tyke Tolbert is a guy that's, what, fit in his 19 years of NFL experience. Dude has the most energy out of any of those coaches. Uh, there was a pass that Valus Jones Jr. caught. Something about wide receiver coaches, by the way. Yeah, it, it's definitely. They're, they're always the most energetic guy. Absolutely. Like. But energetic just on a, a simple pass where he goes up and, you know, gets some yards after the catch. But Tyke Tober is the one just yelling and, and just kind of amping up the, the entire, like, uh, offense there. But you're seeing how these guys are operating, and they're doing this and showing this devotion to these rookies. Once the vets get in here and, like, it's a full practice, like, you know that these coaches are going to be very detail-oriented. Nothing's going to get overlooked by them, and that should help the Bears, hopefully, in the long run. Yeah, and, um, you know, I, I just I, – going back to what you said about Kyler Gordon, same thing about, um, I think, Jaquan Brisker mm-hmm. early on is you just I, – it caught my ear that Alan Williams referenced Matty Rafflew's Eminem yeah, acronym true. Yep. for motor and mean when it came to Jaquan Brisker. Um, so when a little stuff like that trickles out, you you realize, oh yeah, okay, that's why they drafted him. Like he's a fit for this. And I, and one thing I want to talk about here is, um, in in a few minutes, is just the overwhelming negativity that still seems to exist, especially oh, nationally yeah. with this football team. Some of it is completely justified. Mm-hmm. But one of the things I think is being underestimated a little bit, and eventually it will come down to talent, and they will need better players, without a doubt. Um, But I think what is being underestimated a little bit is the idea of finding guys that fit what you're trying to do here. Okay? And playing fundamentally sound football, Knowing what you're doing, which is something that Luke Getze talked about yesterday, the yeah. importance of that, and in many ways, those are the types of things that we're that didn't happen enough with the last regime. I think it started to, and then they got away from that uh, in the last three seasons, and you had too much of all right. This offense might be a little too complicated. The players can't understand everything. It's leading to pre-snap penalties and burn timeouts and things like that. Yeah, and then you had. Um, screw it. We're just gonna go get you know. We're just gonna go spend money and get maybe get away from the players that fit exactly what we're trying to do. And then there was the overall lack of identity, too, which yeah. I think existed on defense but didn't exist on offense. And so what we're seeing here early on, I think, is just while I understand some of the criticism, but we're seeing Ryan Poles and Maddie refuse to me being and the assistants, and all the assistants, being very much on the same page of this is the brand of football we're going to play. Yeah, This is how we're going to do it. We're going to make sure every single person that walks into this door, whether it's rookies who aren't even going to be here in 48 hours because they're just tryout players, play our brand of football while they're on our fields. And then you ingrain that. You get that to be your culture. You get that to be your program. And then you try to figure out, okay, which players that are maybe more talented can you bring in that still are going to fit that? Like, you can't get away from that. You can't just no. sign any good football player. They have to fit what you're doing. Well, and to add on to that, Adam, like, Luke Getze yesterday talked about we emphasize 11 as one on every single play. Talking about that, you know, connectivity that you need to have from, you know, your left tackle to your your slot receiver to everybody that's on the offense. And, of course, that applies to the defense as well, but – I think in the last regime, in, to me, Adam, when Matt Nagy would call plays, it felt like none of them were building off of each other. Like, to kind True. of, you know, set up a defense for something later in a game, it almost just felt like, here's my big, you know, playbook, be you, let me call something from here, and that's how he was calling the game. From just the small glimpses we're getting from Luke Getze, how they're talking, what they're saying, 
it feels like everything could build off of each other. And that's how a game should be played. That's how you should you should call an offense. That's what your offensive game plan should be so that later in the game, the third quarter, you show them something early. Oh, let's go back to this because this, this DB jumped the route. We'll get him on the double move ne- next time. So simple things like that. But when I hear Luke Getzey say 11 as one, that's what I kind of think can, can happen with the connectivity that's kind of happening with, with this Bears team as of right now. Well, and one of the things I think we're seeing on both sides of the ball, and it, it seems to be a staple, Matt Eberflus, is just simplicity. And I think sometimes people confuse, on both ends, simplicity as being basic mm-hmm. and too easy to prep against. Some of that can be true, but on the flip side, the benefit to it can be just making sure that everyone knows what they're doing. Because on the other side, you can be as complicated as you want on offense, and that might be harder for the other team to prepare for you. But if your own guys can't figure it out, it's worthless. Yeah, So, I mean, you got to start there. You have to to worry. To me, you have to worry more about in-house, especially right now, this time of year, and honestly, a big portion of training camp, too. Focus on yourself, what you're doing. Worry about your concepts. Make sure that's drilled in your head, and you can't spend too much time until you get to the season worrying about what the other team's doing. And then, to your point, like when you do get to that point in the season, when you're in the games, you have to be able to adapt in-game. Yeah. And that's a great point by you, Nick, because I just never felt like there was enough of that going on um, with the past coaching staff. So, Let's get to a discussion that I think was already being had this morning. On, was that this morning? Because I watched Good Morning Football. So yep, Good Morning Football. Today. And we love everybody at Good Morning Football. This is not at all, um, you know, fighting back at them or – or because I the criticism, I completely understand it. It's just – it seems like whenever the Bears come up in conversation. <laughs> and the, the sad thing is, is like the thing that they were reacting to was Ryan Poles on the score from Friday, mm-hmm. which was a very positive – yeah. interview and comment that he made about Justin Fields, basically raving about Justin and saying, Work you know, ethic is great, you know, just all the positive things you want to hear from your quarterback, especially this time of the year. You're going to hear a lot of that stuff. But, yeah, they took a positive. And so that sparks a whole segment on Good Morning Football, mm-hmm. which is my favorite morning show to watch. Oh, I love it. Yeah. And the reaction, sort of understandably, is immediately like, yeah, but what about the fact? And it, and it turns into kind of a negative conversation because – what about how they haven't given him enough help and all the we've talked about all mm-hmm. of it too and I get it. Um, I also at the same time feel like there's like Darnell Mooney is being He's criminally being underappreciated at this yes, point. Yes, I feel like it happened. Even Dan Orlovsky did that the other day, didn't mm-hmm. he? What did he say? He said. Uh, Let's see. I can I can find it up, but yeah, that they so, don't. He's not even a number two. If yeah, like that's that, right. They don't have a legitimate number one or number two wide receiver. Come on, Mooney is at least a number two mm-hmm. at this point. Like, they had 1,400 yards last year. Um, so there's a little bit of that going on. Not that the talent should be praised that at all. It needs to be better. But they do have one of the better running back rooms in football. That never gets talked about. No, absolutely not. Yeah, and just to clarify, just to make sure we got that right with Darren Orlovsky, he said, respectfully, Chicago Bears fans, some number two wide receivers in the NFL. You put Mike Williams, Chris Godwin, Adam Thielen, T. Higgins, Michael Gallup, Devontae Smith, Tyler Lockett. Mooney is a good player. He isn't a number two as of yet. Pretty sure Mooney had better stats than Mike Williams did last season, if I'm not mistaken. Michael Gallup, like Darnell Mooney? I, I mean... What numbers is Tyler Lockett? By the way, Tyler Lockett, to me, is a is a great comp for Darnell Mooney. Yeah, and I like kind of what he could be. Um, okay, Lockett had 73 catches for uh, just under 1,200 yards last year. Okay. And we know that Darnell Mooney had over 1,000 last season. So, yeah, and that was they're both playing in dysfunctional offenses last <laughs> yeah. year, too. So, you know, maybe they can both elevate. One had Russell Wilson. I think I said yeah. 1,400 yards. I don't know why I said that earlier. 81 catches, uh, just under 1,100 yards for... I think I was thinking of Mooney's career yardage, which is okay. closer to it's above sixteen hundred. But um, anyway, yeah, co- co- comparable numbers there with Tyler Lockett. I get the point, and in this, uh, I, I hate to get into semantical mm-hmm. arguments sometimes because people are making fair points, and then they throw in one caveat that you so you can quibble with yeah. a little bit, and then they try to tear down your whole argument. the The point that Orlovsky was making was valid, which is like they need more talent. 
Exactly. Nobody's disagreeing with that. And then everyone turns into an argument about, you know, Darnell Mooney is this and that, which is just fun sports radio banter, yeah, and that, which we can do here. Absolutely. So, <laughs> like, I don't disagree with what Good Morning Football was kind of saying in their premise, again, that Justin Fields does need more weapons. He does need to take steps individually, not take those sacks, get the ball out quicker. But, you know, what? a big thing that has been talked about at House Hall, Adam, since, you know, Luke Getz, he's got there is a scheme. That wasn't really talked about on Good Morning Football this morning. And we still don't know exactly. We, we hear 11 is 1. That's great. There's going to be connectivity. But, you know, you got to – you gotta. that's like the, the wild card in this. We don't know exactly what this will look like until games are being played. And once that happens, then we can start to see exactly what Justin Fields can do with the limited talent that he does have around him. And, again, we, we're in May. So we, we can't really make a definitive – but someone had a that. comment up there earlier that was like, I think people are underestimating how bad this scheme was. True, yeah. And also the schedule, which, by the way, it's schedule mm-hmm. week. We're, we have a little bit of schedule news for you uh, towards the end of the show. <laughs> Is that our schedule week button? I mean, it's just that's how excited I am about the schedule. Okay. <laughs> that was the most sarcastic noise I could find. <laughs> it was perfect. <laughs> I like that. Anytime we bring up the schedule the rest of the week, we have to play that. Okay. But <laughs> except on our schedule show special because then I'll just do the whole uh, Yeah, exactly. All right, I'm already sick of it. I okay. changed my mind. We're done. <laughs> more more impression, impressions by Lawrence, I think is what Yes, what people, people are want. calling for this. We want the impressions. I mean, let's that's not overhype it. It's May. We got a long way to go here. That's I don't true, know that's I, true. We gotta not really you know, spread it I out. I don't, I don't know bit. how many voices I've got inside my head. Oh, well, got some time to ask ask the wife about that one. <laughs> um I hope one of those voices is Aaron Rodgers. That's all. I, you can do it. Come on. You got to work on it. Okay. You, you can't have the face and the hair. I know you cut off the hair, but you, you got to have the impression to go with it. <laughs> so don't do that again, my ears in the comments. <laughs> 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 it started us too. We're like, whoa. <laughs> but the schedule's easier, The which we'll get to later in the week when it comes out. We'll have a full schedule special for you on Thursday night, by the way. So looking forward to that. Um, but... Again, I keep going to, like, it, the offense just, if it's fundamentally sound, and as you said, like, plays on plays that actually work together. Makes sense. You know? I believe in Justin Fields enough that even if the weapons around him aren't great, it can't be worse. And I say that having covered this team for as long as I have, and I always know it can be worse <laughs> because I see it be worse, and I'm telling you, it can't be worse this time. Adam, Bring that back in November, I'm sure, when they're dead last yes. in the NFL. But I really just don't see that. Yeah, and two, Adam's like, we're not giving... I feel like there's not enough credit being given to Justin Fields, too. That's, because it's like, yes. it's like, okay, he doesn't have the weapons around him. Justin Fields can't do it. It's like, uh, it, does it help? Of course. Every quarterback's going to want all the receivers and number ones, a great offensive line, of course. But, like, he's, he's, he was drafted where he was at for a reason. There was there's a special talent in Justin Fields, and even if in the circumstances the situation is not ideal, he is still a good football player. Yes, we need to see more of it, of course, but that I think is being overlooked in itself. Adam is like, oh, he doesn't have the weapons. Yeah, Justin Fields can have a good season. He will he struggle at times? I think so. I think that's that's fair to say, but he could still do things himself, Adam, that can help this football team because. Eberflus is expecting the big jump in year two. I'm sure he is as well. Luke Getze, this football team. So I think that in itself is also being a little overlooked. And like getting back to that good morning football conversation, like there was a couple of things that were just said that like, again, and I don't want to be guilty of what I just said, like where you I know, I think I know quibble going, with but. the semantics a little bit, but like Peter Schrager brought up uh, the, understandably brought up the excitement about the Lions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as crazy as that is to say. But there's some building excitement there in Detroit. And then he brought up Amaran St. Brown as, like, a piece that people are getting excited about. And then I think he was the same person who then said, I'm waiting for Darnell Mooney to make this huge jump. Well, what was last year? That was a huge jump. Yeah. I mean, what else could it have been? And Mooney had, like, almost 200 more receiving yards. And again, he did that, that with nobody else around him. Allen Robinson was a good, so defense are now focusing that way. It's like he did it in 
unideal circumstances as well. So, yeah, I uh, there's just little stuff like that. I just feel like a, 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 some things are being underappreciated and the circumstances matter too, which is like, this is a rebuild. Like people mm-hmm. are just going to have to get used to that. I was kind of, uh, not to change subjects to a different team in town, but like a lot of the angst with the Cubs right now, I'm confused about, quite frankly. True. And I know I'm a White Sox guy, but weren't they supposed to suck? Did I miss something? Were they all of a sudden because they got Suzuki like great now? Yeah, they're not good. Well, I knew that, but like, <laughs> I, yeah. I'm not surprised that they're 9 and 18. And I'm surprised that some fans apparently right, are. are. Yeah, people are sort of taking where they're at now and like, Turning it into this horror show, but like this is kind of what is happening and where we've this was a show that was, was programmed, programmed, you yeah. know, that was supposed to be scheduled, right? <laughs> yes. So okay. Yeah. yeah, no, I I saw that too. I know our guy Cody, yeah, who does a fantastic job with, with the Cubs. Well, and, yeah, I feel as bad. As, he's as got long a couple he's not comatose after a Sox loss. He was that uh I, I called him out on Twitter the the other night. Uh, <laughs> that. But yeah, no, he's yeah, he's and, and he's been telling people that like, look, like this is it. Like this is like stop going to some of these dark places when we know where this is where we are and this yeah. is what's happening. Just f- like look for the good things, you know. Like like Suzuki's there mm-hmm. and and I don't know. Like just calm down, everyone. Well, and that's where like so when it, bringing this back to the Bears, mm-hmm. it's like let's just accept the situation for what it is. And I think that to me, a successful season at this point is so they won six games last year. If you can do better than that, mm-hmm. seven or eight wins, but more importantly, more importantly, the quarterback takes a step forward. Darnell Mooney doesn't at least go backwards. Like if he could repeat what he did last year, then yeah. I think he is a legitimate number two wide receiver, which like, nobody's setting higher. Like no one's going overboard here either as we try to, I guess we're sitting here defending the Bears a little bit, but we're not sitting here saying Mooney's a one or that Fields is going to be an all pro. We're just talking about progress and a step in the right direction with all these units. And I and I guess what I'm trying to say is that, that is possible even though they're rebuilding. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be this giant leap. And it doesn't have to be them. I don't think they're rebuilding to the point where they're, yeah, we've talked about this a lot. Like, I do not see them picking top five next year. Maybe I'll be wrong. I do not see that happening. Because if that happens, that means the quarterback did not get better. No, yeah, and I would even say that fans, and correct me if I'm wrong, people who are going to, in the chat, who will listen to this, like, if the Bears are competitive in a majority of these games, and yes, there are some, you know, there are some teams like the Buffalo Bills, you have the Packers on there, but if you come away from that game, like, man, the Bears are in it, they just didn't have the talent this year in 2022 to kind of get them over the edge to get that victory, would you would you guys take that? I I feel like most people would, knowing again the circumstances of this season, and if the Bears can show that this year, show that the offense does have an identity, then I think you you there's there's ways for this team to make progress without the win total being as high as you want it to be. Yeah, I well, feel like this comment could be a whole podcast. Fans don't like losing. Any owner asking his fan base to be okay with losing is making a very hard ask. The one thing you have to acknowledge is rebuilds don't always work. I mean, there's just so much to take out of that because, like, teams have to rebuild. You know, it's a thing that you have to deal with. And, like... But I think this is where I'm getting at, John, with the comment, is I... Other than trading Khalil Mack, like, what have they really done to tear down the roster? I'm being serious. Like, they let a lot of free agents walk, but any team would have let those guys walk. Yeah. They let guys go that were 30-plus. They're just doing normal football operations, in my point. Now, you could say they didn't go out and spend big, but going back to the last comment, they didn't spend big because they're setting themselves up for next year with more draft capital with a ton of money to spend in free agency. Like, this is why I quibble with the word rebuild. I don't think anybody is saying that the Bears are okay with losing. And again, I'm telling you, I can see them winning one or two more games. I think you need to be thinking about it just a little bit differently. You have to be okay for a year that they're not going to make the playoffs. 
I agree with that, Adam. They're not losing. No one's sitting here saying the Bears are going to win two games and you need to be okay with that. No, no. No. Everybody wants to see progress in certain areas with the quarterback. You just got I think you got to set the expectation that they're not going to go on a magical playoff run next year. I'll add to this, too. It's like I think where a rebuild could have happened for the Bears was before last season when you saw that things weren't kind of going in the direction the Bears wanted to go and they end up 8-8 eight and eight again. That was a time to kind of let loose, but you held on. That was the problem. You held on to all these problems that just persisted for another season, and then you end up a and end up firing, I think, Matt Nagy, Ryan Pace, a year later. Well, and I would actually say that, that the biggest problem there was the reaction to 2019, where there were signs that it was not going in the direction you thought it would. Especially offensively. And they just threw a whole bunch more money into it. Danny Trevathan's contract. Even though Robert Quinn gave you all the sacks he did last year, like I still quibble with that. Mm-hmm. You know, signing a guy that was, I think he was thirty two at that time. I have to go back and look, but he's plus thirty. He's been in the league for a long time. He's not necessarily the best fit for your defense. You know, there's a lot of stats that showed he's better on turf than grass. You're bringing him to Soldier Field, one of the worst turfs. You know, there's a a whole lot of reasons to me that throwing all that money at a guy like Robert Quinn wasn't the smartest of ideas. They kept restructuring all these contracts. So um, cuz they thought there was a window there and they're overlooking the actual holes on this team, yeah. you know. And uh Robert Quinn will be 32 on May 18th. So is that next week? And John, I see your comment there, your follow-up comment too, and you know, and for those listening to the podcast it says for the record, I hope you're right. I believe in Justin. I'm fearful of the way the fan base will turn on fields if the team struggles. Like That's true. I mean, it, it it's and it's I respect that we can have this conversation, John, and all the other commenters. I get where you're coming from. I I, I think that's kind of where we're coming from too. Is like I just hope fans can see, look at two different lenses, like mm-hmm. progress with guys like Fields, not necessarily coinciding with a ten win season. But where I do think it will impact the record is I don't think with the style of football they're going to play that it necessarily leads to. 14, 15 losses at the same time. No, yeah. So I, I and, and so somewhere in the middle of that, with progress from Justin, I think is where you want to be uh, this coming season. Hey, we've got to tell you, the best way to support CHGO is to download the points bet app. Use code CHGO when you sign up. Hey, maybe put a Justin Fields MVP bet. <laughs> hey, you could. I don't know if I'm going that far. I'm yeah. just saying, but <laughs> that's what points bet, you, you could do that. Uh, if you do that right now. I did do a Luis Robert MVP bet. I did and then I think Anderson he got hurt one. the next day. Oh, see. but he's back now. And yeah, Sean Sean Anderson, our socks and bets yeah. uh, guy. He he did that as well. And then his points bet account started to go down, and he actually did the cash out option. Oh, oh, so he could get and bet more <laughs> uh, immediate things. So see, I'm riding with Louis. Yeah. I got I got money on Tim Anderson right now. I'm for, not bailing for MVP. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's where I put it. Yeah, I'm like he's one. gonna be healthy. Not Luis Roberts. So. Well, that's the problem. Yeah. yeah. What are we talking about? Luis Roberts just ran literally through the Wrigley Field wall and just like, I yeah, did no big deal. That, yeah. I'm fine. I think there's a dent yeah. in the Wrigley Field I'd wall. I prefer oh, he yeah. didn't do that. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Yeah, that was a little frightening. But like, I know Eloy was hurt already, but like, he shouldn't be allowed to play at Wrigley. No. Just I, keep yeah, him no. away from Brett Wait a minute. Doesn't he hit homers like every other at bat? Don't at care. But I know. I'm just saying when they play go to Wrigley, which oh, fortunately they don't, they don't have to go back to Wrigley mm-hmm. the rest of the year. Also, why do you have a brick wall as your outfield? Do I want to anger all the Cubs fans yeah, right now? I enjoy Can't that. you grow ivy on padding? No. I don't know how that works. No? Maybe. Like, can't you have some padding that looks like brick wall that you put over the brick wall? Oh, that wall? looks terrible. I actually, I remember, <laughs> like, six years ago, Baylor's football stadium did that. Yeah. And I, oh. I sort of made fun of that on a show. And the company we worked for was, like, connected to the Big 12. Ooh. And we heard about that. And I was like, give me a break. Like, oh, my God. Put a brick wall on your sideline. Teams line. are so sensitive these I know. days. Ooh, you're so sensitive. Wall. Anyways, back to the points, but yeah. <laughs> uh, Okay. Hey, uh, but if you uh, do that right now, use that code CHGO, you get up to two risk-free bets, up to $2,000. But that's not it. $50 more first-time deposit. You receive a free CHGO membership, which unlocks all of our web content. You even get a free shirt, like this sweet one of your choice from the CHGO locker. So $2,000 in free bets. You get that membership, the free t-shirt, all for making that first-time deposit with PointsBet. And if you have any questions, email pointsbet at allchgo.com. We will help you out. 
with the NBA playoffs going on, you're going to want to know about the live NBA same game parlay. Build that perfect live NBA same game parlay only with points bet. Boost your parlays. Watch live, parlay live, boost live, all with points bet. Online sign up is available in Illinois. You can download the points bet app right now. Register your account from start to finish, all from your phone. So, what are you waiting for once the game starts? Don't just bet. Live your bet life with points bet. Gambling problem call 1 800 522 4700. And as you know, Chicago sports fans, CHGO is a place to be for literally all your sports. You got it all here. And if you aren't a member, of our CHGO family, like at this point, like what Adam was asking, what are you waiting for? We have members will get access to all of our premium content from all of our great writers. We were just at Rookie Mini Cams, a bunch of stuff on all CHGO right now. You can go check that out. You also get a free T-shirt. Again, if you want the Bulls, Adam's rocking it right now. We have so much on there, um, and it's your choice. So you can pick whatever one you want there. And you get access to the members-only Discord, the CHGO Lounge, Good, a really cool community in there. People just, again, sports fans, wanting to talk more about whatever team it is. We got that. And, of course, we have podcasts and live shows on every team every day. We're going to do something special for the schedule release. We want to be there for that. That's going to be happening later on this week. So, again, I ask you, what are you waiting for? Come join this amazing family that is constantly growing here at CHGO. All right. Keep things moving here. There were some transactions. Uh, I like that the Bears did this, and I, what did not surprise me, you know, they brought in so many UDFAs, undrafted free agents, uh, after the draft because they had the available roster spots that compared to some other teams, well, you got the roster right there. 69 players. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, very, very nice. Um, most of those players are now gone. <laughs> which is not nice. <laughs> so that was the roster that had all the tryout players and uh, the tryout players. Some of them made the team, though, because they mm -hmm. got to try yeah. out. So there were some transactions that what were made. What do you made. want first? I got incoming and outgoing. What do you want to see on screen here? Well, let's, uh, let's I guess let's look at the incoming guys, the Bring guys that, that tried out. Yeah. By the way, shout out to uh, Nicholas Moriano's amazing Samsung phone, Mr. Uh, Green Text Guy. Look at that. Look see, at that you can't get that. Um, who was it? Courtney Cronin, ESPN, covers the Bears. Does a fantastic job. She's like, what phone do you use, Nick? I'm like, <laughs> Samsung. Can't, can't get that quality on so, any iPhone. It looks Just, a little blurry, I'll be honest, but that's fine. He it's, was, I okay, it. he was actually, Ryan Poles was out there. And I, I just like the out fact there. that you got him on the phone. He's literally making these transactions oh, yeah. as you took this photo. So. Or he's ordering lunch or something. So good Hopefully work. he's good calling work. his mom. It's Mother's Day. That may have been sad. I think this was Saturday. Maybe yeah. he's getting a jump on it. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe he's trying to be the first. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You know? Maybe. We don't know. Sure. Anyways, incoming. Shout out, Samson. Tell us about these guys. Yeah, Christian Albright, <laughs> John <laughs> Alexander, Antonio Ortiz. I think Nick and I are like, gee, I hope you're not okay, asking so, me that. So legit, the only one that I actually, <laughs> for the media on Saturday, Sunday, we got a pretty up close, I'm not going to say personal, but the running backs would literally practice or did their individual drills right in front of us. De Demontre Tuggle. Mm -hmm. I do remember seeing number 30 there. But do I remember any of the big plays, any runs? Absolutely not. I honestly, like a lot of these guys, like, okay, the Bears signed these guys. Okay. Um, but Demontre Tuggle, built. Well, he has good footwork. He does have good footwork. Honestly, I thought he had better footwork than, um, I'm forgetting the, the name of the, the running back that the Bears just drafted. Trustin oh. Ebner? Yeah, Ebner. Trustin yes. Ebner. Well, yeah, uh, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's Again, it's just in the, it's just footwork drills and stuff, but it wasn't uh, Ebner's day, especially on Sunday. Well, Carson Taylor is the defensive end out of northern Arizona. I did take note of Powerhouse him. school. Powerhouse, northern Arizona. I'm just kidding. I've, it's they might, those, like, I feel like they might be Yeah, I mean, they're pretty certainly decent, not, though. They're not like FBS. So, That's what, a, what did they list him at the other day? That's a plus. You're looking for uh, Alexander? No. Or, uh, uh, Albert? Carson Taylor, the oh, defensive else end. Who I feel <laughs> like was wearing a, like a linebacker number. He was wearing, yeah, he was wearing number 44. So he's 6'3", 241. That's the thing. I thought he was like a little undersized, but I liked the way he was moving. Like he, he stood out to me in practice. So I could see why they signed him, Carson Taylor from uh, Northern Arizona. 
because I think they I, he was more of like an edge rusher type guy than like a stand up defensive end. Um, anyway, yeah, played forty seven games over five seasons at Northern Arizona, the fourth most in school history. Yeah, no, they're not. They're not good. They're not a powerhouse in any way, shape, or form. The <laughs> lumberjacks of Northern Arizona. Well. I apologize to Northern Arizona. Their, their last uh, last time they reached the FCF playoffs was 2017, and they lost to San Diego. Mm. Not San Diego State. Diego. All right. But anyways. Well, the overall point is they had tryout guys. They signed a bunch. And then to do that, obviously, they had to cut six players. You add six oh. players, you got to cut six players because their roster is at uh, 90 now, finally. Crazy. They did get there. Yeah. Um, so a lot of these guys were undrafted free agents. That had just been signed last week. Now they are let go. So it's just kind of a lesson there. Even the guys that do get contracts right after the draft, rookie minicamp still basically a tryout mm-hmm. because you can lose that contract very, yeah. very quickly. The one name on there that people will probably take note of for sure is Ladarius Mack, Khalil's brother, um, who actually got let go in the middle of the season last year and mm-hmm. then brought back. So yeah, does he end up with the Chargers at some point? Follows Khalil? Like that kind of I mean, if he's lucky. The, yeah. I'd be. Maybe. I don't know. Is maybe he good? The bottom of the roster Is he there. any good besides being Khalil's brother? Uh, he does Let's music. He's big into music. Great. How does that help on Sundays? I don't know. but he, I he did actually it. get a kid. The Bears did a feature on him like in yeah. training camp last year. Mm-hmm. Um, was it in training? Yeah, I think it was. And yeah. they caught him the same day the yeah, feature came yeah, out. I remember that. <laughs> Hashtag content. Love it was it. like, oh, man. Oh, why do you do that? <laughs> and it was all about his music. So, um, <laughs> Savon Scarver music. was a wide receiver that I know a lot of people had their eye on coming uh, out yeah, last he's week. He's a Utah State or Nevada or something. I've, I've seen he him was play. A he's a Mountain West kid. kid. Yeah. yeah. I Master know a lot Teague. of people were, were high on Lenore. Landon Lenore. Um, out of Southern Illinois. Yeah, he just never. But both of those guys were only 5'11". You know, they're... Um, smaller wide receivers, and they had a lot of them that they signed. So I'm not surprised to see a couple of them out. And then uh, Master Teague, the running back from Ohio State, who I like, but he's not a speed burner, deep room. I was a little surprised they actually brought him in. Um, yeah. So he doesn't stick after all that. No, but he, I mean, again, we saw him up close. Like, dude is built. <laughs> he just doesn't, I don't know if he has the quite, the... The talent to play in the NFL. Maybe, again, maybe I'm wrong, but... 5'11", 221. Yeah. So. Yeah. And um, like the at Ohio State, but that doesn't always translate to the NFL, obviously, as as people well know. So there were some transactions there uh, that we want to make sure we told you about. Any um, Anything stand out from the press conferences with the coordinators? Yeah, so, you know, we'll talk about Kyler Gordon here because Alan Williams... He he was asked, um, where do you kind of see him playing? Where is he? He projects as a nickel, projects as an outside, but where the Bears are thinking for him, outside corner, learn that. Let's not get into playing the nickel, which Alan Williams was saying is like one of the hardest positions mm-hmm. to play on the defense. So let's let Kyler Gordon kind of focus on the outside corner. Again, there isn't much competition at that position right now that the Bears currently have. So that's where Gordon's going to start off. His career, but again, it's a guy that's very versatile, and that was one of the reasons um, the Bears wanted were intrigued to go get him when they did at number thirty nine. Yeah, well, I think the thinking there is um, long term. They think he's a guy who could probably play all over, but you don't mm-hmm. want to throw too much at him yeah. to begin with. So you stick him at one spot. But I also we talked about this last week. Like, really feel like Kyler Gordon's the odds on favorite easily to be the starting outside corner. Uh, and then, you know, the number two corner alongside J- Jalen Johnson. Then they got to figure out um, who works out at that nickel spot. Yeah, and it sounds like maybe Tavon Young is going to get that, that first opportunity if he, you know, could stay healthy. That's been his issue for his entire career. But you, the Bears were able to turn, like, a weakness in that secondary, what could arguably be a strength. And, yes, starting two rookies in there. Uh, that hasn't happened for a very long time in Chicago. Adam, did you see the video that the Bears posted of Kyler Gordon just making the – he just looked like he double-jumped, like someone pressed mm-hmm. double X and just went up to go catch the football. I was like, the guy is so athletic. I'm, like my one career dunk. Yeah, here you go. It was yeah. just like the, a yeah. double jump. Yep. Yeah. I'm looking forward to sudden, watching him in training camp. All of a sudden, sure. they had a 45-inch vert on that one play. Yeah. No. No, that's not – no. 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 
Get the video. <laughs> Get the video. <laughs> Uh, Another thing, though, Adam. I uh, had someone come up to me the other day and go, I believe you, man. I believe that you don't. Really? I'm like, yes. Thank you. We got one. Thank you. That the one guy. The one person. That's one all you guy, need. One guy, just like one dunk. See, all you need was one guy to believe me. That's all you need. Yeah. Um, another thing that Alan Williams did talk about, though, um, is pertaining to this defense, because we know Matt Eberflus, he got the job because of what he was able to do in Indy, creating a, you know, a defensive defense. I don't know if juggernaut's the right word, but he had a very solid defense that created a lot of turnovers there in, in Indianapolis. And so Alan Williams was asked, like, how how do you, you know, kind of go about implementing Eberflus's defense? I think we have a quote that we can throw up. Oh, yeah, here. we have it. Do you want it? Yeah, let's I was just putting up. up a quote. Uh, some, one of our commenters said that uh, they believe in Adam's dunking abilities. Thank but, you. Yeah, let's probably, the same, probably the same guy who <laughs> can't oh, talk really to you the other day, but thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> so, yeah, Alan Williams on Matt Eberflus's defensive scheme. So he's been outstanding. Again, Williams referring to Matt there. And what that means if he's kind of stayed, stayed away so I can put my stamp on it, so I can put my personality to it. And so with this, Adam, like, I to what does an Allen Williams kind of defense look like? Again, it's going to have a lot of the principles that Matt Eberflus had brought from Indianapolis, but now he gets, like he said, to put his own personality to it. Like we don't know what that looks like at this point, but it, Allen Williams is getting an opportunity though to actually be a defensive coordinator and not just kind of run like the head coach's defense and kind of like a like a trial in a way, but this well, is like, I, I look at this more of, of just Eberflus not, not being totally hands on. Okay. You know, yeah. I, I don't think it, it suggests any type of massive scheme. No, uh, not you know, Williams anything. went on to talk about how, you know, Eberflus's influence or Rod Marinelli and Lovey Smith and Tony Dungy. So it's like the scheme is the scheme. I, I took it this more of, you know, Whereas Matt Nagy was in those offensive meetings, it was clearly him His running offense, the show. Yeah. Even after they changed play callers, it was still Nagy doing, you know, most of the designs and all that. Like I, I really do feel like Eberflus has made it clear. I am the CEO of every. Yeah, you know, I'm the old John Fox co- quote. You know, I'm I'm not the offense coordinator. I'm not the defense coordinator. I'm the special <laughs> teams coordinator, but I coordinate all three. Um, you know, that's that's what I took out of this. And so I think, I don't think there's going to be any massive defensive changes, but I do feel like Alan Williams feels like he's been empowered to put wrinkles in that he feels like are necessary. And what those wrinkles are, we'll have to wait and see. I just like this uh, from Dupes. He says, the Colts D wasn't a juggernaut, but it was like that old truck you want to get rid of, but it keeps getting the job done despite all indications it should have been breaking down a long time ago. Well, that, that's, that's encouraging. An image. Yeah, that's an kind of sounds like your discussion <laughs> about the Bears in like what 2019. You know, just yeah. all the holes that they had. They kept keep ticking on time it. bomb. <laughs> no, man, that means you know it's that F one fifty, bro. It's got that one hundred fifty thousand miles. It's still going. It could get to two hundred thousand. Yeah, let's keep going here. <laughs> it could do it. Oh man, I don't know. Uh, I look at it more like it's a dependable scheme. It might not necessarily be the top defense in the league until you get those really, really talented players to come through. But it's you're not going to be – you're probably not even going to be back half. Like, yeah. I'd be surprised if the Bears' defense is worse than 15-16. Yeah, I, I would be surprised by that. And, you know, it, I guess it – like, to stay in the discussion with the defense, like, Matty Rafloos was able to accomplish what he did in Indianapolis without having necessarily, like, the – I'll, look, you had obviously DeForest Buckner, you have Darius Leonard. Like I'm trying to think of star power in terms of the defensive players that he had. Is am I missing anybody else that's really in that upper echelon of like defensive players at their respective positions? I don't. It, maybe if he gets more, you know, playmakers on that side of the ball, what what can this defense be? And not to say that the Bears currently have that, but they're kind of. Maybe they're they're inching towards that, um, but yeah, I think that the defensive scheme. Maybe we just haven't even seen what it can be at its full potential yet. Well, the one um, who was the corner that took off this year? It's not Rock. Is it Rocky Sin or no, 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 no? The, uh, their their nickel corner was like oh, a pro oh, this year. Why why am I blanking his name right now? Um, 
But yes, he's one of the better nickel corners in the league. Yeah. And someone in the comments yeah, will it's have Monday. It My brain's not working. I right can't away. Uh, do it, commenters. No. So in and so like I there you go. Kenny Thank Moore, you, Jordan, Kenny Moore. Yeah, Kenny Moore took off this year, and so they have three, three like standout players at that in that defense, and because okay. you said Buckner, you said Darius Leonard, and then Kenny Moore. Yeah. So, okay. I mean, they got like Julian Blackman's a good safety. He's going to his third year, mm-hmm. but yep. Yeah, I, I, I get what you. Now they signed Stephon Gilmore, but that he wasn't there last year. Mm-hmm. Um, he's also a lot older. I, yeah, I, 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 to your point, I think there's enough talent still on that side of the ball that to with the, the scheme done. to get the job done on that side, and and yeah, that makes sense. All right, uh, do you want to talk about the schedule a little bit? Because there was some schedule news. I have some thoughts <laughs> on. <laughs> Damn it. Did we cancel that already? Or was that over? I guess no. It's no, I, I, <laughs> we'll keep it going as a bit, but otherwise I'm going to pre- at least pretend yeah. that I hate it. I did turn it down that time. Commenters were talking about their eardrums being heard. Yeah, I don't off. know. In here, it's not too loud, but yeah. that doesn't mean that it's not being blasted into people's ears. You got your yeah. headphones on. Uh, yeah, you know, sorry, people. <laughs> take them back. Uh, yeah, but before we get to that schedule news and that discussion, I have to tell you about our next partner, one that I actually took earlier this morning. Athletic Greens, as you know, I've been taking my Athletic Greens every morning before my workouts, and honestly, I feel great after taking them. With one scoop of Athletic Greens, you are absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help start your day off right. This mixture of ingredients helps your immune system, gives you energy, and improves your focus, and that's why, again, I take my Athletic Greens, and you should too. What's awesome about Athletic Greens is that it costs less than a cup of coffee a day. Also, it helps support better sleep quality and recovery, which we all definitely need. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D, and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash CHGO Bears. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash CHGO Bears to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutrition insurance. And again, if you're enjoying what we are doing at CHGO, please help us out by downloading that points bet app. Use code CHGO. When you sign up, you'll get two risk-free bets up to $2,000. And you can make, uh, and that's if you make a $50 or more first-time deposit, you receive that free CHGO membership, unlocking all of our web content. We have coverage from Minicamp over the weekend that you can check out uh, from Nick, my Bear Stinks column, and all of our web content for all of the teams that we cover here at CHGO. You'll even get a free shirt of your choice from the CHGO locker. Email pointsbet at allchgo.com if you have any questions. Online sign-up is available in Illinois. Download the PointsBet app right now. Register your account from start to finish. You will be signing up with the fastest sports book easier than ever so you can start living your bet life in seconds. What are you waiting for once the game starts? Don't just bet. Live your bet life with points bet. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. All right. The NFL, as we talked about last week, they know how to turn things into events. So not only do they have the big schedule reveal Thursday night. I'm going to have to come up with a different word for schedule. Uh, I thought you were going to hit it again there. Games are played. No, I just figured one. Uh, they they uh, are trickling out some key dates throughout the week. So this morning, and this is really for their television partners, I think, to get a little bit of exposure, which is fine. Um, this morning, they did announce a week two doubleheader on Monday Night Football. Yes. Because I did. They snuck that in last year. They did not have their normal week one doubleheader. I remember, like... It almost didn't get noticed until the, I think the week one came. We're like, well, ah, there's not two games. I missed that. I think I was still mourning the loss of week one against the Rams and just the, <laughs> you know, the deflated Yeesh. performance yeah. from the Bears. But. Well, that's your bad for thinking they were going to win. I yeah. didn't think they were going to win. I projected them to lose. I think Will, everyone else, projected them like 
guys. Why? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I we'll do a throwback right. Thursday episode sometime this summer. Why did you think the Bears were going to win week one? I don't think we need to relive last, last year. No. No, I'm, not I'm not sure, sure that will help ratings if we uh, <laughs> just no. like spend each What week. will hurt more, that or the noisemaker sound that I just keep playing over and over? Um, I think reliving last year yeah. and the big wasted time it was. Yeah, I mean, that's honestly... that's The what Steelers it was. game was on uh, TV yesterday, though. That was, that was a fun one. That was a good game for, for Justin uh, Fields. Yeah. Anyway, the uh, Week 2 doubleheader, September 19th, is going to be the Titans versus the Bills. Okay. Okay. That's a good game. That is a... this. It's, it's interesting how they're doing this, too, because in the past they would have, like, a true doubleheader. This is, like, a staggered... These are more like staggered start times with two games on at the same time. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. So 6.15 Central Time, it's Titans-Bills on ESPN. And then the Vikings play the Eagles in Philadelphia. And that is an 8.30 kickoff, which is the the standard Monday Night Football kickoff time. Well, it's actually 15 minutes later, but basically the same time. Is that usually Eastern is. or Central? What are we talking about here? Six, 6.15 and 8.30, is that Central? I'm sorry. It's that one's Central Time. Uh Eastern time. So seven. Let me start over. Six fifteen Central time. Titans Bills. Seven thirty Central time. Vikings Eagles. It's just like a college football Saturday. Let's go. Yeah, but I just wish they were spaced out. Why? You know how many commercials there are in NFL games? Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, the odds you're still going to have two commercials on at the same time are about forty percent at every minute of those two hours. They're they're both playing. Yeah, but it's longer. Takes up more of the night, more football. What's wrong with that? I mean, you're still going to get five hours of football based on those two start times. <laughs> yeah, more well, football more. Yeah, I don't necessarily want that second game to start later. I just want the first game to start earlier because I'm very selfish and and don't care about the West Coast fans. No, nope. but no, it's who does? Titans Bills. I don't need to watch that in California. <laughs> That's true. Oh, except for fantasy football gambling and the entire popularity of the NFL. Sure, but it's come like, on, it seems like a big. <laughs> Big thing there. <laughs> anyway, so that's the uh, the games that were announced today. There's going to be, I think, I don't know which which network gets to announce tomorrow, but there's going to be more games announced tomorrow and then on Wednesday. And if these are the marquee games being announced, I don't know if we're getting any Bears announcements in the next couple no, of days. No, no, they can wait on that. Um, but man. that did make me think a little bit. Looking at the Bears opponents, if we could pencil in. A couple games. Okay. Maybe we should do this more tomorrow. We could probably pull out a full segment on this. What game? Okay, let me ask you this, Adam. The Bears always end up playing on some holiday. What holiday are they playing on this? Are they going Oh, they're playing on all of them like normal. <sighs> like that one year, they literally played on Halloween. That was last year. They Thanksgiving, play- Christmas Eve, and New Year's. New Year's Eve. All four. They did do that last year. Yeah, last year was every Well, to be college. fair, I think everyone played on New Christmas and New Year's Eve, right? Because of yeah. that was just a Sunday. Well, then you, yeah. Then the year I'm thinking of, though, was um, Halloween was a Monday, and the Bears hosted the Vikings, I think, on Halloween on a Monday night football game. Was that Trubisky's debut? Like, is that It might have been. Okay. It might have been. I think it was also my son's trick-or-treating debut, though, which oh. is in my, you know, a bigger event. Sure. It proved to be a bigger event. What did he go as? I think he was a lion that year. Don Burr will like that. Hey now, <laughs> <laughs> someone called him Don Bear in the in the chat Ooh, just now. Ooh, I like that. Here. We're gonna call him Don Bear for now on. Sorry, Thanks, Don. Don Burr. <laughs> um, all right. I'll just say this. Oh, if the Bears have to play on Thanksgiving again, since apparently the NFL really really likes that, and I understand it, the Bears do still rate, so they will end up on some Monday night games. Mm-hmm. First of all, just for nostalgia's sake, I'm going to switch thoughts here real quick. For nostalgia, you could always put a Bears Dolphins game, yeah, in prime mm-hmm. time. Oh yeah, I like still, that. Still yeah. brings nightmares to some of us. Yeah, I know, but you could still do that. So uh, the Dolphins come to Soldier Field. I wouldn't be surprised if that is a uh, a prime time game. But if they are going to go Thanksgiving route again with the Bears, I'd prefer it be. The Cowboys game. Okay. That. The reason why I don't think that would happen, though, is because you're talking about late November. It seems like they always want... I mean, that's the key game that I think matters more for the ratings. 
They both kill in the ratings. Mm-hmm. But I feel like the late afternoon game is more important. <laughs> so if they're <laughs> going to sneak the Bears into Thanksgiving again, I feel like they're going to go to Detroit the first again. slot, yeah. Get it done and over with. So yeah. Selfishly, I wanted the Bears to play in Miami. Well, you can't control that. You'll have to wait another four years. Damn. And Sorry. then maybe they'll play in Spain because the Bears and Dolphins are in that the Spain territory. That's Spain's what? a country, not a territory. Well, that's <laughs> that they put. That's their territory. That's their territory. That's how they worded it. They're like, what does that's that mean? The territory. Um, I have because no they idea have like the, the international countries got assigned teams. Like they, yes, it was like a game of risk. Oh my god! And, <laughs> and they gave, risk every Thanksgiving. So the Bears got the UK wow. and Spain. Yes. Okay. It's like their home countries. Okay. Besides, well, let's go you to know, Spain. America. Man, <laughs> this just makes me want to watch the we'll laugh the World League of American Football. Yeah. I missed the uh, Frankfurt Dragons, or who the hell, who the hell were they? Oh, yeah. Uh, I think Jared Payton played for Amsterdam. The Admirals. Yeah, sure. Pretty sure it was Amsterdam. We'll have to check in on it. Uh, I'm also wondering, you know what we'll do? We'll, let's hold this for tomorrow's show. We'll, we'll come in with some schedule ideas, but I am wondering if the, the games against the Giants and Jets, because they're both in New York, okay. will be back-to-back. They did that one year. I want to say it was like 2007 or 2008. They played back-to-back games hmm. in New York. And I want to say it was part of a three-game um, like swing. They played three games on the road. It may have even been Patriots, Giants, Jets, like three, three straight games, which is rare to have three straight road games. Would the Bears stay in New York or would they travel I don't think back? they would because you can – I guess you could, yeah. Flying between Chicago and New York is not a big deal. Like when West Coast teams do that, they sometimes schedule that on purpose, and then they'll they'll like go to the uh, what's it called, the Briar or whatever in West Virginia. Okay. The Greenbrier, and they'll like stay there and practice there. This is true. Greenbrier. I think the Forty ers did that last year, a couple years ago. Weird question. Did, did we did we do the Fields talk at all that I've named this podcast after? The Luke Getzey quote. Did we even talk about that yet? I don't know. <laughs> What was the headline? I didn't see it. Uh, it's fields ahead of schedule. <laughs> we did it, was, it was referenced a Luke Getzey uh, quote that Nick gave me. We did talk about Justin Fields. We I did. Don't know yeah, we there was a lot that. of discussion there. Okay. We just yeah. didn't bring up the, the quote. Yeah. Well, but we got uh, 30 seconds. It's fields ahead of schedule. I have no idea. No, he's not <laughs> ahead of schedule. Okay. Boom. I'm going to bring that's that a headline. Up. Hey, uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> there it is. I uh, built this. You guys got to read it. Okay. Luke Getzey on Justin Fields. I've been super impressed with him. I really have. There's no one in this building that works harder than him. There's no one that cares more than him. We're off to a great start. He's really accepted this challenge. We're asking a lot of him to learn a lot of new things. He's been a pleasure to work with. (laughs) Thanks for reading that. Appreciate that. (laughs) You're welcome. And that is your Monday edition. CHGO Bears podcast presented by PointsBet. Use that code CHGO. Follow us on Twitter. Do it right now. Go on Twitter at CHGO underscore Bears at CHGO underscore Sports. Check us out. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the like. Do the notifications. Rate and review, review the podcast. We appreciate you guys. And we will be back tomorrow at 11 a.m. Talk to you then.